Hi, I'm William Barzi from the British Blacklist, and today I've been humbly and gracefully accepted into this space with Vivian Opara and Yasmin Mane Prince. How are you doing, right? Good, you? Yeah, nice, nice to meet you. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Um, well, I want to start off by saying this is, I'm so excited to be here, so much so that I came a day early yesterday before the room was even set up. <gasps> <laughs> punctual. <laughs> You're punctual. Yeah. They didn't let me stay, so then I came back again okay. to come see you guys. Ran in the rain. You guys want to know about this rain thing. I know you've got people to hold your umbrellas now. I know. Don't <laughs> <do it>. <laughs> <laughs> so I took the title, then you run a little bit too literally. Wow. But in regards to your roles in this film, in this series with your characters, I come from a culture of no snitching, so there's only so much I can say about the illegitimate activities that you both got up to. Mm. So if you would mm. kindly... Tell me a little bit more about your characters and your roles without incriminating yourself. I don't know why she's looking at me. Yeah. <laughs> you, get child, you know, I look at you. you get yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, okay, sorry, so I play Ruth. Mm -hmm. um, she's like the mother of the group. She makes sure that we don't get in trouble. Mm -hmm. um, but you always have that person who's kind of annoying. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like how much I can say about her without revealing too much. Mm -hmm. um, I play Stink. She is... One of the many antagonists in the show, but she's the antagonist within the friendship group. But uh, she's party girl, always on some sort of hedonistic mission, um, which drives the plot a lot because it's her crazy, ingenious, crazy mm -hmm. ideas, which like move them from place to place. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I had a bit of like a girl's trip, set it up type mm -hmm. of energy for me, seeing them um, just girls getting it done the way they want to get it done. And I want to know if there was any inspirations for you guys that you draw on for your characters, fictional or otherwise. No. For my character personally, <laughs> I feel like um, Stink is like an amalgamation of like Cook from Skins and Nathan from Misfits. So it's weird, like, but I do, but she does have this, this spirit of like, determination and resilience which like all women have because we're brilliant but she yeah she kind of has it she, she's a bit brash and I, that's why i identified with those two um yeah i feel like because ruth is so blunt and so honest she's kind of written on the page and i just give a little bit of my personality within that i don't really i'm not really inspired by anything else really because she's kind of the person in the group that just holds us together. The so ground. That, yeah, do you yeah. get what I mean? Mm -hmm. So she's not inspired by anything. She just makes sure that we keep alive as we go along. <laughs> so, yeah. Did you guys read the book in preparation for this? So I bought the book. Mm -hmm. I started reading the book. Mm -hmm. I put the book down. Not because the book has been brilliant, <laughs> just because our world is so different. And I didn't want to get confused. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to honour the world that we were trying to create as mm -hmm. a... Cause yeah, I could have just started being like, is this from the book or from the city? Like, yeah. So I was just like, Ben Shannon World, Zora and World can come after. Maybe I'll read the book now. Mm -hmm. I think when things started happening, which I can't spoil, I was like, okay, I don't want to spoil more things for myself. Mm -hmm. So that's what happened with me. Because I was just going to lie, I haven't read the book, but if you guys said you had, I was 100% going to go <laughs> ride or die yeah. with you both. Stand, stand <laughs> on your <laughs> ignorance. <laughs> 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 I know the book exists, no. so I definitely wanted to find out if that was part of your preparation process. But what I do know about um, Zoran's world is that in that book, um, Sting and Ruth are not played by or not portrayed as black um, characters and black women. But um, when you received the script, was there a lot of back and forth in order to make it feel authentically you? Because I didn't feel like watching this, you guys were just dropped into this world. Mm -hmm. It felt like you were supposed to be there. So See, how much did you have? See, that's the thing. I feel like the way that it was written, see, I don't want to say colorblind, but the way that it was written, mm -hmm. you don't really have to feel like, it, it's not written like, oh, this is specifically a white girl speaking, a mm -hmm. black girl, an Asian girl, because to be honest, as London people, yeah. we all speak in different ways mm -hmm. and it's so diverse. And we kind of just all copy each other at the same time. Mm -hmm. You can't really tell these days compared to like back in the day. Yeah. So I feel like when reading the characters, for myself, I saw her as any race, to mm -hmm. be honest. So I'm just like blessed to play her mm -hmm. as a black woman today. Yeah, I think I was, I was just, I was like, this is stink on the page and I'm me, so I'm gonna imbue it with a sense of um, what I think this character would be, which is obviously informed by my experience as a black woman, but mm -hmm. also like a plethora of other things. So um, yeah, I, and yeah, you add little, you just add little, Flavors and seasonings as you as you go yeah, on, which, exactly. but um, to make it feel like a fully fudged out person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, no, I definitely agree with that because I think once you're in it, it automatically will become a quote unquote black character because you guys are black. So there's, there's not, not always, extraness. not always, but ah, I can think, you speak yeah. to that? No, 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 no mm-hmm. I think, I think it just does, it's not necessarily like some. There are just like some con. You can't just put people and and ignore the context they come with because mm-hmm, of who they are. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think great writing, mm-hmm. good collaborative work, and like great acting um, makes it <laughs> no, all come acting, together. Yeah, you own know? It, own it. Great. So yeah. Thank you. And then um, what I also wanted to ask you was um, in regards to the connection building and the world building in this world. I've um, seen an interview. You mentioned um, your um, connection that you had with Nicholas Pinnock in um, Unsaid Stories, and yourself. Um, I met you and David on set, David Johnson, about maybe two years ago mm-hmm. when you guys were doing Rye Lane, it was in the final scene, which I won't spoil for anyone who hasn't seen it. I could feel that connection. How um, much of a connection would you say that you guys built as a core four or as a core two um, during your time filming this role? I feel like what's funny is that it didn't feel like it so it was something that we needed to build. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it is about the fact that we're all so different and we're all from different backgrounds as well that just opposites attract. And we have such similar humour, like dark humour as well. So then when things were going on, as we were spending more time together, we had a group chat before we even met. We were just battering. So I feel like it was just very natural for us to just connect. Yeah. and Yeah, shout the out chemistry to just built. Daniel Edwards. Because exactly. that was some crazy alchemy. Because he was casting us over Zoom. Exactly. Weeks and weeks and weeks. Different combinations. It's like making the Powerpuff Girls. <laughs> and then, like, yeah, out popped to get Chemical X. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then that's all of us. Um, yeah, and then we all popped out. And it worked somehow. We just got on, like, yeah, it's luck. No, I, c- yeah. I could feel it. I could feel it. And generally, my closing question I like to ask people is, what do you want people to take away from this particular project that you're working on? But in this regard, it's kind of like, what don't you want people to take away? From? I guess the message is, don't do drugs, don't sell drugs, don't break the law. But is there another message you want people to take away from this? Especially young women, all your side, young women watching this. So you guys are confident, strong, powerful, you know. I would say don't take yourself too seriously. Mm-hmm. I feel that's the main thing. Because this show is just absolutely hilarious yeah. and manic. And you just go with the flow. Mm-hmm. And if your friends say, let's have a night out, let's have a night out. And see what happens. So, yeah. Yeah. I think, and if you, like, boil it back, like, say the show is astute. If you like reduce the stew, mm-hmm. at the core of it, it's like a story about family. Yeah. And like family is everything and all the shapes it comes in. And don't take that for granted. The end. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that, that, that movie, yeah. And on that note, that talk of stew has got me hungry. I hope me you guys too, are man. well fed at the end of this. <laughs> and I appreciate the time that you've given me today. And I hope that many people see this project because it was so much fun to watch. And I hope it was just as fun to be a part of. Thank, Thank you. you so much. I appreciate you guys. You. Thank Bye. you. See ya. Thank you.